talking to you about how I live out of a rucksack. I have been doing this since 2013. I did it across 50 countries from really hot ones like Thailand and Philippines and today Hungary to like really cold ones like Iceland and Canada so this is for all terrains but it's also for people who don't want to travel. I don't like to use the word should but I think you should live out of a rucksack even if you live in one place in one country and you have no intentions of moving. The reason I really believe that is because I'm really anti-hoarding. I really think a lot of people let their possessions possess them. The more stuff you have, weirdly, the more stuff you end up buying. I think it's also not great for your mental health to wake up and just see so much stuff. Going back to the fact that I traveled like this, I can't tell you how light it was to get on a bus or get on a train and have just all of my stuff in one rucksack. It made me feel so light and so free and so like, oh, I don't have to think about moving because it's all here. And it's all here. Ta-da! I have all of my stuff laid out here and I'm gonna talk you through all of this. We have the stuff that we're gonna put in the bag. This is my first look at my new DB rucksack. Actually, it's not my first look. I couldn't wait to look at it, so. So this is my 30 litre sage green hugger. The reason I got the sage green one is because I really like the colour. Apparently it was inspired by the colours that you can see in northern Norway. There's the little bit at the top. And it says, I think my dog is vegan. I don't know if they did that on purpose because they know I'm vegan. I would like to say for the record that dogs can be vegan, but like all dogs, you should make sure they're getting all their necessary nutrients. It has an extra pocket on the back for your laptop. And inside there is another extra two pockets, which is going to be really useful in a minute when I put my underwear somewhere. So, excellent. I really like that it's like this. I used to have a rucksack where it would open up like this way around and that's really irritating because all your stuff is on the bottom. Now it's called the hugger. Does it feel like a hug? We're going to find out right now. It actually does feel like a hug. I wish you could feel it. It's got some kind of love inside that. This is the one I'm going to be using. I also got the 50 litre deep sea blue from my Hungarian boyfriend Tomasz who carries a lot more stuff than me because I sometimes give him stuff to carry. It's also like Samwise Gamgee, he likes to travel carrying some really useful equipment for the kitchen which I'm eternally grateful for. When I first started traveling this is the size of rucksack I used to have. As far as I remember from their website the great thing about DB is you can actually hook the rucksacks onto each other like this. The metal things hook onto these things on the front and you can carry them together which I think is a really cool feature. One of the things I will say is when I first opened the box I was kind of disappointed that they came in plastic however it's only one piece of plastic and this box was it was sealed like this and I think without the plastic stuff might have got in and not necessarily damaged the bags but I understand like plastic does have its uses one of them is protecting beautiful bags like this. I can probably reuse these plastic bags for something. So that was the first look at the rucksack. Now let's get back to the video and pack. Packing is literally one of my hobbies. I'm a packer and I'm proud. So I'm going to start with the stuff that's not clothes and then move on to the stuff that is clothes. And I'm going to start with something that I love very much but actually <laughs> you would be better off to get a smaller one. This is my camera. Actually, my camera is filming this, but this normally has my camera in it. I've had this camera for a few years and I love it. It does really well, but it's really big and heavy. Nowadays, you can get much smaller ones. There's that saying that you should take nothing but photos and leave nothing but footprints. I really like that saying. I really recommend traveling with a camera, although a lot of people now, their phones have really good cameras. Your judgment call. If you have a camera already, take it with you. If you don't, don't necessarily need one. The other thing that's annoying about my camera is the charger is also massive. I have an adapter. I don't recommend this one. This one is more like sentimental value for me my grandpa gave it but it's not great. <laughs> it looks cool but it, it falls apart. The point is you will need an adapter so get one that you like. <laughs> Thank you grandpa. I really recommend taking a hard drive so you can back up all of your pictures. When I first went to Australia I lost all my photos. My computer died and that was kind of irritating. I recommend using like a cloud or some other place that you can upload them to and a hard drive because then you've got it in two different places. Your phone, here I have my charger for my phone. This is a really good thing by the way, it has all the different countries plugs, apart from France I think. I really recommend you get one of these, they're really really good. I normally put the stuff that's like loose, I try and put it in other bags. It's really annoying to 
look for something and it's loose. Here is a bag that's going to go into the bag. And this will of course double up as a day bag. Something that's important at the moment obviously is the mask. So they go right in there. This is a moon cup. I recommend this for everyone. If you're a menstruator, obviously you're going to menstruate into it. You know, you don't have to worry about finding tampons or pads abroad. If you're not a menstruator, I recommend you carry one around and give them to people. You could even do it like you offend someone with a sexist comment. You apologize with a moon cup. Another really important thing that I recommend you take is a fan. Uh, even if you're just going to cold countries, you might get like really hot on the bus or the train. Next up we have headphones, very important. Obviously the little ones are like lighter and they take up less space. These ones are kind of good as just like noise cancelling. On that note, we also have sunglasses, courtesy of Top Fox, the trademark sunglasses. One of the things I regretted the most when I first started travelling was the amount of books. I took like six books with me to Australia. And since then I've evolved and I've got one of these things where you can read books from. So I really recommend you get these second hand instead of supporting companies that are bad like Amazon. A wallet? This is mine. <laughs> I have a second wallet as well. This one is really good because it's small, I can fit in my pocket, it can fit in the pocket of my camera bag. This one is really good if I'm going out with friends. I can, it actually fits my phone in it. This is a vegan company by the way called Gunas. They were the first vegan handbag company in New York. Like giving you tips on how to rob me. If I'm only going out with money on my wallet, I take this. Dance the night away. You may have noticed that women's clothes tend not to come with pockets. I always thought the reason was because women could then also buy a handbag. They would have more things to buy. The initial reason the women didn't have pockets was because the witches used to have spells in their pockets. So one way to prove a woman wasn't a witch was that she didn't have pockets with spells in. Go and get your clothes fitted with pockets. You can support a small business and you can fuck the patriarchy at the same time. <laughs> or wear male clothes. Male clothes. I don't carry any makeup. Obviously I use to carry a lot of makeup. The only thing I carry now is one of these little essential balms. They're really good if you have chapped lips. It makes stuff feel numb. It's also nice on if you've got muscles that hurt. So this is more like medicine. Obvious one is a passport. It's in a little bag. I don't go to airports anymore, but when I used to walk through airports and you're always like getting out your passport. A lot of people that I've come across in my travels carry playing cards so that they can play games with their new friends. I carry tarot cards so I can predict my new friend's future. Also for myself, I just like reading my own tarot and being like, what should I do now? It's really creepy how it works. I'm a woman of science, don't get me wrong. I just really enjoy it and I find that it's really creepy. Like literally the other day I asked it, should I drink alcohol today? And it was just like, no. I have a tiny little box of jewelry. Most of these jewels were gifted to me by companies or were given to me by my friends and family. This is like a tiny little keepsake box. Sometimes I buy little trinkets when I'm abroad, but mostly I don't. This is one of those secret packs that you wear underneath your clothes. I bought it before I went to New York and I wore it and then I was at the bar and I had to like get my money out from underneath my clothes. I felt like such a nerd and it was really embarrassing and I haven't used it since. Although it's a good size and I could fit my passport in it. But the reason I still carry it around is it's a good place to keep American dollars, which I recommend you take with you because sometimes you just need some American dollars. And in an emergency, if I was staying in like a hostel or something where they didn't have a safe place to keep my passport and my American dollars, I would put it in here and take it. I've never done that, but I like to now have the option. This is really important. I would recommend taking this. It's a mini hot water bottle. It's particularly useful if you have like period cramps, but it's also good if you have like muscle aches or if you're cold. The only people I know that have these are British people. If you're not British and you also love a hot water bottle, please let me know that I'm not alone. And now we move on to clothes. My rule with clothes is you have one on and one in the wash. I'll take like two summer tops, two winter tops. I also try and be conscious to get things that you can like layer. Obviously in the winter I would wear this underneath another top. I also try to be conscious about where I buy my clothes. I almost always get them second hand. At the moment I'm finding a lot of clothes on the streets in Hungary. They're everywhere. The reason I do this is because fast fashion is really bad for everyone involved. I also have this which is really light. It's like a little shawl that you put over a vest like this. It takes up no space but it also it adds some kind of colour. Some temples and that that you go into you have to cover your shoulders. This is really good for that. 
I also have one long sleeve shirt which is really good for places where it's like considered immodest to show your shoulders but it's also good if you're in places where mosquitoes are everywhere. The best things you can do against mosquitoes is not give them any skin. Long sleeve top for sure. Then we have bottoms. <laughs> then we have trousers. Again I recommend layering so I have this tiny pair of leggings, it folds up really nice and small, but are great for all weathers really. That I can wear just as leggings, but I can also wear underneath like thick winter trousers like this. Layering is, is really key. Two winter trousers, one for wearing one that's in the wash. Summer trousers, this skirt which I love, it's really long, it's really like nice in the summer because there's a lot of breeze. Skirts are actually a really good thing to wear, you can wear them in the summer just as they are or you can wear them in the winter with like a really thick pair of tights. I also have a pair of shorts but I think they're in the wash. Two jumpers, you know my usual one arm, one in the wash. This one is a lot thinner than this jumper so this is more like a summer jumper and a winter jumper and if it's really cold I can wear them both. Fits in perfectly. Last but not least we have swimming costume or bikini. Very important. Underwear. I normally take about 14 pairs which actually sounds a lot. I think you could probably get away with taking seven pairs especially if you can wear the same pair a couple of days running which I personally can't. Or if you can like just go without underwear which I can. The socks, I recommend the ankle socks over the long socks. They're smaller. I would normally take about three pairs and maybe one longer pair. I recommend taking a scarf that can double up as like a blanket on a long cold bus ride. If I was in like a more modest kind of country, I would also have like a thin shawl to again wear over my shoulders or something. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Literally fits perfectly. Cap for the summer. You want to keep the sun off your face. Last but not least, these two things. If you can travel without a laptop, I really recommend it. You don't have to worry about it getting wet or broken or stolen. I work off my laptop, so I can't travel without it. Also, obviously, it's great for booking anything. A copy of your passport and a copy of your latest bank statement. Some countries that you travel to will ask for proof that you have sufficient funds, which depending on the country can be anything from between 500 pounds to 5,000 or more. <laughs> to go. I want to thank GB for helping us with this video. We're going to make a few more videos about them so keep an eye out and also all their links are below as per usual. And I want to thank you for watching it. Your watching these videos means a lot to me so thank you very much.